Welcome to Adapt English, and, and thank you for tuning into the channel. Uh, and then following this series, we're still on day seven, and we're doing segments of that. And we'll be talking about client safety. I think it's very important to know this um, before you go into your exams. Most of these things, you already know it. I'm just putting it together in a very small, concise, precise way so that um, you can apply it as you study. Um, in one place, uh, very short uh, video. So um, you have to know something about this. It's part of the um, your exams. Four is a big deal. And therefore, uh, you have to know how to prevent it in a patient. Um, so well, usually what happens is it can happen in the hospital or at home. So you have to look for the setting. Whatever they're telling you is happening, that's where you pay attention to. So in general, okay, in general, to prevent fall, okay, fall precaution that everybody need to take um, is it, it, very important. I mean, it, the, the precaution that you take is the same no matter where you are, basically. Yeah, except a little bit of additional information depending on where you are, okay? Um, for people to prevent fall, this is general, like a, any patient, anything like that, they need they need to engage in some moderate exercise, okay? Moderate exercise, at least. You know, when they say moderate exercise, 30 minutes, pay attention. This is very important. 30 minutes, three times a week, not once, twice, just 30 minutes, three times a week. So they can get that, you know, they can go to yoga, they can walk, you know, so you can do this without no going to the gym. And then the, the room, the area that they are should be um, cluster free, okay? It's, it's just free, it's not clustered, uh, cluster free environment. The room should be lighted. I mean, that's like no brainer, okay? Light everywhere. Uh, there shouldn't be any rug, okay? They are, this is always the tricky one. If you're going to have a rug, then please secure them. These are really key facts you have to understand that they like to trick you. you questions that you mix that you're not supposed to. No rug, but if you had a rug, then you have to double tape both sides, okay? Secure uh, double, double sided. Okay, you double tape both sides so the rug doesn't move at all, okay? And this is a little bit of, um important but you got to pay attention to that grab bar so that they can use it to go downstairs up and down they have to have non-skate okay non-skate uh, um bath taps that when they're bathing so that they don't slide they fall okay and their shoe too has to be non-skate okay it's non-skate so so that they don't fall down and this is the trick that they may trick you with. It has to occur in your house and out, outside. They think, oh, I'm inside my house. I don't need to. Yeah, but all of them, you have to do that. And if they tell you, they they may not tell you, but they will show signs of vision. So you have to let them show vision, ophthalmology exams. They may not tell you, but they will be reading things, seeing things that is not there. You should let them go see ophthalmology. Um, maybe every six months, okay, um, and so that the the the, the eyes can be checked. And, and sometimes people may need to wear uh, four alert device, okay, to can alert them you that they are fallen, so they can wear this. And this is also very important. Sometimes they bring it in the question. Um, they may. It, it, it depending on what they want to do. But this is, the, if you look at the other lecture, I've talked about the bare criteria, the list. It's basically, it's a list, okay, that older patients should not take. Medications, no, they shouldn't take. You should avoid them in them. You should avoid it in them. And the best way to remember them is anti. Anything that's anti, yeah, yeah, they, they don't need it. So anti, uh, hypertensive, Okay, um, so you should be careful when you give it to them. You can cause orthostatic hypotension, they will fall down, but they still need their blood pressure control, so you got to give it to them, okay? Uh, anti 
psychotic. So everything that is against, you see, anti-psychotic. So that's also a problem. They cannot take benzos, you know, they can, they're going to fall down. So anti-colonergic, yeah, that's bad. Okay, um, you, you, you should diuretic, they don't like it at all. It make them you know, autostatic, okay. Um, in sliding scale insulin, sliding scale, they become hypoglycemia. And so you gotta be careful with them. So this is the, just a few of them. So you you got to make sure they know on these medications. Um, you check these are best criteria. So they can give you a list of medication. I forget one. I think you opioid too. Yeah, you can take opioid. You have to be careful. That's the thing. It's not like that. They cannot take. Be careful with them. So you if you cannot give it to them, you don't need to. Then don't do that. Otherwise, they're going to fall. It will lead to fall. Okay. So those are the things. Um you should pay attention to. Sometimes then they will be specific, okay? Now, if you are in a hospital, hospital, then you have to design your strategy based on the location, okay? Now we are in a hospital. Remember, if somebody is at four weeks, in general, they usually, everybody come in, you give them socks, non-skid socks and shoes, right? They wear socks, right? Um, your room also should not be cluttered, okay? Um, the same thing, you have to, this is almost number one or number two, you can choose them. Orient the patient, okay? Orient patient to the room. This is a priority action. That's why I'm putting star over there. There's other ones, but this is one of them. You cannot, they don't know the room. They are unfamiliar. You tell them where is the clock is, where is the bathroom orientation and that will prevent them wandering around and fall. So if you see a question like that, a patient nurse is taking care of a patient they are in the room, what is the priority action? One of them should be orienting them. And so depending on the other options, it's over there, but orienting them is very, very important to the room, okay? And the bed in the lowest position, okay? That's very important. Um, they have to be able to know where they call light it. And this is another priority action, okay? You have to um, let them know where is the call light is within their reach. The reason why some of them fall, they're looking, they're going to press the call light and then they fall down. So it, it has to be within their reach and then you have to arrange them to their room, okay? Um, then um, you have to make sure they are belongings. You know, this is another reason, belongings within their reach. Okay, yeah, they don't get out of bed trying to get their purse or the glasses to read. So you make sure. So these are some of the few things. But I I, pay, I put asterisks to those that I, you have to know that, in, in, or you have to select them if these those are the options for priority action orientation to the room and call light within when um in their reach. If the patient is high risk, so there is a evidence of high risk. Okay, even this one you can put um, I remember something. You can um put a sign in front of the room so that everybody know. If the patient is high risk, so now you got to take extra precaution. Get them to the closer to the nursing station. That's the best way to prevent them from falling. Okay, get them closer to the nursing uh, staging as much as possible and let them wear a colored uh, coated sock so that everybody can see them. Okay, it would be easy. And so they can have a wristband and, and col uh, colored socks. So those are I risk patients that and uh, precautions you can take and to prevent that. Why does this happen? Why for? Okay, why? For why? Why do older people fall? These are advanced stage. They, they're old, okay? Uh, unfortunately, uh, they're old. And the, the, I think, me personally, I think priority action is see, uh, the main thing is incontinence, okay? They, they, they will be there and they want to wake up early night in the morning to go pee and then they fall, okay? They cannot hold. 
um, the, 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 the EIP. Sometimes too many lines and tubes, okay? Lines and tubes cause them to fall in the hospital, okay? Um, and, and because of that, you try to take those information from them as much as possible. How do you prevent it? So how do you prevent fall in the hospital? This one, you, you, you know that, you, you just have to think about it. If these people are high risks and I put them closer to the nursing station, how can I prevent it? I visit them more often, visit, visit, visit more often. So you, 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 your rounds, you have to be more frequent. So you see them more frequent, you know, uh, maybe hourly is okay just to check on them. You don't have to do anything. Hey, Mr. Susan, so how are you doing? Good, you know. Um, they're close to the nursing station, so you're close to the nursing station. Okay, um, they have a bed alarm. Okay, make sure they have a bed alarm so that when they get up, alarm is going off. Okay. And the other thing that you can also do, let your family, member, family members, okay, work. That means what? Stay with patient. They can do that. So these are ways you can prevent the patient from falling uh, before so that you don't have to go through all these things. Um, and that, that's the brief summary of that. Okay, fall is a very important. So you got to know some of these things, what you do in those situations. We like action that. That's client safety right away. Everything about anklets is safety. So this is the biggest safety problem you have right now. Okay. So restrain. Key facts. I'll give you key facts. Okay. The restraint can be mechanical. So you tie them down. You give them medication, chemical, and you hold them physical. Okay. So you physical, physical, physical restraint, basically. So, and these are the three. In capital letters, do your best not to restrain physically. As much as possible. So non-pharmacological, Nothing, don't give them any sedation. Try your best they, as much as you can. So non pharmacological aspect, no tying down. You try, try to talk them out of it. I know they're confused, but try to do your best before. That's what the answer choice should be. But if you have to, yes, if you have to, yes. If we don't need to, there's other non, if they say patient is confused, he's doing this, they, I will choose non-restrained option. No matter uh, if they pull in their IV, okay? You distract them, you give them something to hold on to. Don't say they pull in their IV, so I'm going to restrain them. Give them some ball to grab on. And then, so non-pharmacological is number one. But if you have to restrain, first you notify the doctor because then you need an order. So you notify the doctor, and after they do the restraint, they have to renew it 24 hours. Okay. But this is where they, you get confused. You still have to provide physical need. Mr. Maslow is there. So physical needs. So you have to do that. Physical needs. What, what does that mean? You need to assess them every two hours. Q2 neurovascular check. This is the problem. Neurovascular. Neurovascular check. You see them every two hours, you're checking on them. Okay, you're checking, making sure the restraint is not causing any problem and the restraint has to be loose enough. Okay, it's not tied down completely. Okay. And it should be tied where? This is where they can ask you. Tie to the bed frame, okay? No anywhere, bed frame. And loose enough that it can be easily removed. It should be loose. These are key facts. I'm not trying to give it anything. Tie to the bed, loose enough, 
that you can take it out, okay? Then reassess them every two hours. You see them every two hours doing neurovascular check, but you then you see them Q4 hours also for your normal reassessment. So, and it's a little bit confused. Every two hours, they're checking, they're getting neurovascular check. Then every four hours, they're getting Q assessment. Okay. And then after 24 hours, reassess again whether they need a restraint. This is select all that apply I've provided you. You see how they can give it to you. You can list all this thing and you have to choose which one is right. It's concept, content, bricks factor, education, teaching, all together. Select all that apply is nothing. The one you see, if you know those information, how many things do you know from for that particular problem? So if you say you know restraint, can you give me five things about restraint that you need to know? Yes, that's all. If you're doing that while you're studying five things about every problem, at least you're golden. Okay. Um, then listening to this, restrain or I think I don't know how to say it. Restrain or seclusion, yeah, should not prevent you from doing your thing, doing your nursing job. The patients still get what? They have physical need. Give them their muscle. Okay, give them their muscle. So even if they are in seclusion, go see them, okay? And then just don't say that they are in restraint, so I'm not going to do that. So you have to do that. And you shouldn't forget documentation. This is a really big problem because it's a legal issue. You have to give them reason why in your note, reason why you 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 restrain them, what alternative you try, okay, what type of restraint, what location. You see what I'm doing? Select all that apply. It's the same thing. It never change, okay? It never change at all. Location, okay, and the and, and the type, okay? And then what kind of care, your care that you gave, okay, during the time? Skin care, what did you see? Which you do every two hours, okay? And what kind of physical need, what kind of muscle do you, do you provide? So that you save yourself. You have if you do this in your documentation, that's excellent, precise, concise, has everything in it for anybody who come and read it, who knows what why you did it, when, how long, benefits, and what kind of help you provided. And that is all we have to say about restraint. And that's what you need to know. Then, I think I, I said this already, uh, a confused patient. So please, once again, least restrictive. This is some of the questions, they're very tricky, okay? I've taken some of these exams before, medical, no nursing, but medical, and they, they try to trick you. They keep on emphasizing, giving you the same questions in the different way. It's the same thing least restrictive, try to be nice. I know he's confused, but try to be nice. Least restrictive restraint, okay? And how do you do that? Stay with the patient. Stay with, choose this answer, okay? Or one-to-one, -one. how about that? One-to-one. -one. I know he's confused, but I'm staying with you. you know, stay with the patient, one-to-one, -one. okay, one-to-one. -one. That's how you can, they're confused. They don't know what they're doing, okay? Then explain the situation to the patient. Pay attention, this one. Do not reorient. People get confused, reorient patient in this situation. Why do I say that? They're already confused. How can you rearrange somebody who is confused? 
they they, 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 they won't understand. So they, you make them more anxious. This is a key fact. It takes me a while to understand until I've seen patients and realize, oh yeah, they're all confused. And you're telling them, sit down, look at here, do it, nah, nah, nah. You rearranging them will make them really, really confused. Now they have to understand what you're doing, what you're telling them, but they're already confused. They can't understand it. So first, you try to be less restrained. So you stay with them one-to-one -one, and, and then touch them, support. Then after you gain their trust and everything, secondly, so this is the second thing you do. Reorientation is not the first option. You first do the least restrictive by staying with them, talking to them, touching them. Then, so this is normal two. So normal two option. So all of them will be in the answer choice. But guess what? I'm choosing number one. So you should choose this list restrictive by doing this. And but and and, this, and if that doesn't work before you rearrange them. Okay? That is all I need to tell you about. If you know this, every question about confused patients, take it with you. I need to do less restrictive, less restrictive, stay with them, stay with them, touch them. Then if that fail. Then I can rearrange them. If you rearrange them from the beginning, you're making them more confused. So we're not going to do that. We are not going to rearrange the patient initially. This one, you know, it will be quick. Like I told you, this is like try to get everything. You have a fire. It can be in the house or in the hospital. We got to fight fire. Okay. So we do our race, which you know. Okay. You, know, you rescue the patient and then you alarm, and then you contain him, and then you execute whatever you got to do, okay? or you extinguish it. It can be execution or extin extinguishing it, but that is the way. So um, we'll, um, rescue whatever you need to rescue from that area, okay? Um, then you pull the alarm, okay? Um, then you contain whatever is the fire is coming from, and then execute whatever or extinguished. Okay, the fire, if you have to do that. So if you are with the patient in the room and there's fire, well, you put the patient out. Maybe then you put the alarm, then you go and close the door to contain it and then take care of it later. So rescue anybody near the fire is very important. Put the alarm on, contain. So you know, I don't have to talk too much about that. That one, I'm safe, okay? Um, sometimes they can give you classes, I'm not sure, but there's classes of um, fire and then what kind of extinguisher you use. So uh, just pay attention, it, it depending on where, and the class one is usually like a, a wood, okay? So, or class A is a wood, wood form. I mean that, so you have to choose the extinguisher that can take care of it. And then class B, um, it's flammable. This is flammable liquid. And class C is electric. So um, this is just in case um, you, you, they ask you. So electric fire. Okay. Then when we get the extinguisher, what do we do? We pass it. And guess what? Select all that apply, right? You pull the pin. Pulling what? Pin. You aim what? The, where do you aim it at? The base, okay. I can set the question. I say you aim it to the uh, uh, the top, the middle, the, the 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 top of the fire. No, the base of the fire. Okay. And where do you squeeze? Okay. You squeeze the under. And the S. Where do you sweep? Sweep up and down? No, side to side, side to side. My brother, my sister, side to side. So. Pass, pull the pin, aim to the base of the fire, and you squeeze the handle and sweep side to side. That's all. That's all you need. I'm not going to say anything. It speaks for itself. Very straightforward um, information. And that is all. Okay. Um, if they are home, okay, which they can ask you, you have somebody with the COPD, he has oxygen tank and it smokes 
bad combination, right? So you got to educate those people, okay? Educate them about smoking cessation and other thing, okay? Um, so what do you tell them? Sign, smoking sign in their room, sign in their room. No smoking. So they have to design certain area where they shouldn't be smoking, where the tank is located, okay? The tank should be far away from everything, in the away from the kitchen, okay? They should have plan of action in case there is fire. And what do that mean? Well, you have to let them raise uh, a razor in the in the family. Everybody have to know how to do stop, drop, and roll. So you, they got to do drill in the house, like, hey, in case of fire, what is happening? And of course, the fire extinguisher should work. This is your selector that apply. It will be, well, you have a patient who is the COPD, oxygen, or uh, in smoking. What kind of teaching do you provide? Well, I have a sign in your arms. Thanks away from everything. Fire extinguisher should work. Have a plan of action if that happened. And then learn how to do the uh, stop, drop, and roll. And that is all the, 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 we're going to talk about in this segment. So let's move on, quick, quick, quick. Now, your safety, but still patient safety, right? You got to know how to transfer a patient from bed to chair, okay? Um, I went to the nursing uh, board, and this is some of the things I, I, on the list of things you have to know. So transferring patient to, from bed to chair. Three, two things you have to know. Like me, I always like to simplify it. First one, is the patient cooperative? Every question they ask you about transfer of a patient, there's, these are the two things you ask them. Is patient cooperative? And number two, can the patient bear weight? Two things, and this will like simplify every transfer question. And then you break them into two. Number one, right? It can bear weight, so, bear weight, that means his leg works, okay? Fine, if bear weight, you helping me. You can stand on your leg, right? And then it can cooperate. Oh, that's better. So what do you do with this patient? Just stand by, and they will do their transfer. You can only, so you don't need to hold them. So this is independent person, you know? It can do independent. No, no assistant is needed for this patient. He can do it on his own. But you just stand there. You are not an assistant. You are just standing to observe in case they, they try to fall or they start to be non-compliant. Okay? Um, if the patient is a high-risk patient, yeah, patient who can fall easily, yeah, you stand by. You have to be there. Okay? So that's the first one. Second, Second, you can tell, you can see what I'm going to do. Second, we change it. One will be the it cannot bear weight, so partial weight bear. So you always have to uh, satisfy one of them. Partial weight bear, but it can cooperate. Quite easy. Then I just need to support you. So you just need somebody to be there, one person. You don't need two people. One person to assist them when they're moving and help them pivot from bed to the distance. That's all. Then sometimes you can use the guilt bed. If they give you this answer choice for uh, this kind of patient, yeah, I'll take the belt. Yeah, I'll take the belt or a motorized device, okay? All of this you can use to help, I mean, the patient is corporate, so when you tell them to do something, they will do, but because they cannot bear weight, you got to help them use the belt to lift them up or use a motorized device to get them. So, but if the patient is not cooperative, then you need two people to help. The third one is the none, okay? None of them, none. That means not cooperative and cannot bear weight, no non-weight bearing. 
So he can bear weight, he can cooperate. It's no brainer. But you have to do everything. Since you don't want to break your back, well, use a motorized device. And this art, I try to make it easy. This is the way I understand it. Um, it's better that way. Like if you read it, it's just confusing, but break it and just give you your yourself the condition and that's what the question will set the question will set a condition for you you have a patient who cannot bear weight and he cannot um uh, cooperate therefore where well, i need to motorize device and then push them okay but if they cooperative well you need just one person they can lift their body okay if the weight is greater than 350 so every weight patient of course you got to have some device to move them so that portion is uh is very important. So if they have none, use motor device. If they can cooperate with their upper body, yeah, they can lift themselves into the motor device. If none of them, yeah, the device is doing all the job. And this is all you need to know about bed transfer. Okay. Now, so what do you do when you transfer in them? What what do you teach them? Okay. You got to make sure the bed and the chair, everything is locked, right? No brainer. And you have your belt around the patient that you can hold it. And they support you. You never bend on the waist. You bend on the knee so that it can help you. Your base has to be wide so that when the patient is falling, you can support it. When it's a wide, at least eight inches. So your knees bend, your 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 base is wide base, uh, feet apart, and then you you're going to pivot on the leg that is behind, as so that when you're falling, you can fall on only one leg. Okay, and then you let the patient transfer on their stronger side. Sometimes they're weak on the other side. The reason why you're transferring them, they're weak. So transfer, okay, transfer on the transfer on uh, towards the stronger side. It just makes sense on the stronger side uh, so that they don't have to fall. And that's all. Bed and the chair in the lowest position and it's locked. You have a belt, you bend on your knee, you put one leg as pivot, the both leg and uh, your base is wide about eight inches you they, you pivot on that one of the leg and you transfer it to the stronger side. So let all that apply right there. Now, as you can see, it's the content and technique of bed transfer. Then this, I know probably you already have your own technique. It's troublesome, uh, but it's easy. Okay, it's just. You have to figure out certain things in your head, and then it will make sense. Think about how we walk normally, okay? So if the patient is injured, then they have to adapt, okay? Adapt to the situation, okay? Um, there's key facts you have to know about the crotches. Um, the crotch has to be about three to four finger breadth, okay? Um, just below the, the armpit. So, so that it doesn't cause the a nerve injury. Or um, you can measure 2.5 2. 2. to 5 centimeters, but they, sometimes they give you inches. I don't like inches. So this is the one I remember, um, inches. Um, so that it doesn't, from the axilla, it doesn't cause injury, okay? Their elbow has to be bent, at least, at most 30 degrees. So 20 to 30. I say 30 degrees. I think 30 degrees is more convenient. Um, and then they have to support the, the, the crotches, not on the, uh, they, they, on the axilla, no, they use their hand. So it's supporting by weight is on the, weight is on the hand and the hands. Okay. And the crotch is when you're holding it, the certain distance, like when the patient is falling, you have to have the wide base, the distance. Yeah, this two, it should be at least six inches apart. So I use 15 centimeters. 
to 15 centimeters apart if they have the crotches in front of them. And this provides some support. Okay, provides some support. And that's, this is the information is what they can ask you. They can trick you about you know, whether they, the, the crotches should go all the way to the axilla and um, how far is the azilla, the end of the crotches to the axilla, what degree is the hair bow turn, um, and then weight, where do you put your weight and how far is the, the, the crotches are part. The best and stable for them or the normal stand is the three point stand. Okay, it's three point. Um, I don't have pictures, but otherwise I will show you to the three point uh, stand where the 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 two crotches is now their leg, and one of the they are left with one good leg and two crotches, and two crotches is representing the leg that is lost, and so the leg that is lost is the up. So that means they have a three point. The two crotches is one, two, and their normal leg. So that's the three point stand. And that is what they always have to be starting from. Okay, and they, they can work with that. Okay, the, the only thing I would say is when crotches move, the affected leg move because the affected leg doesn't work. So the crotches and affected leg has to move simultaneously because that's what it does. So affected leg and the crotches move together. Okay, they move together and then so affected and crotches together. They move together, right? That's the first, you always want to have three points. So when they move and go and stand in front of them, move in front of them, their regular leg is still down and then you have two and the two crotches down. That is three point stand, always three point stand, right? Then the the good leg will follow, right? So then the um the, the good leg follow them. And that's how they move. Three points, three points apart, three uh three point crotches move. So good leg, no, the crotches with the bad leg, then the good leg. Crotches with the bad leg. The good leg, the, the crotches with the bad leg and the good leg. You can make a music out of it, you know. The crotches with the bad leg and the good leg. So that's how you can remember. It. I don't know. You probably have your own way of doing it, but that's the way. But the app progression is three point to two point. So they start from three, then you go to two, then the four point. Four point is when they can bear weight um, completely. And that is where normal walking, you see, when you're normally walking, you do four point walk. And that's full weight bearing. Okay, full weight bearing. And once again, crotches and the bad leg go together. And there's always has to be three point. I'm not going to go into details of what the two, two point stand means. You just have to use the principle affected leg and the crotches go together. And there always has to be what? Three point stand. And so if you every movement, whether it's a two point or four point, is still the same. Okay. Then when they go into upstairs and downstairs, you have to, I mean, uh, everybody knows this. So I just wouldn't I would say it and then you guys can fill in the gap. In the crotches, we always say the good leg. You go up with the what? Up with the good leg. And down with the, with the bad down with the bad leg. So when they're going up, the good leg go, but remember, he, he, the good leg go, the crotches and the bad leg is behind, you see. Good leg go, uh, when you're going up. So move with the good leg, then the crotches and the bad leg also go. So there's always the three point. When they're going down, the bad leg mo move, but the bad leg is not moving, it's moving together with what? The crotches, that's the way, so that you can understand. Bad leg cannot move alone, isolated, no. And that is all. Cain, the same thing, just few principles, okay? Um, about the measurement, what you need to do, and then I think that's all. The length of the cane um, is to the greater to change, okay? Not to the hip, 
by the greater to canter. Okay, to the floor. That's how you measure it. And then the where did they hold the cane? You have to hold it on the unaffected. Remember, if your the side is affected and you're holding the cane, you're trying to have a, a assisted device on the stronger side, not the weaker side. Every time you have a assisted device, it has to be on the stronger side because that's where you're strong. You're trying to gain extra strength of that stronger side. The weaker side is already weak. So if you put a, a assisted device there, you start bearing weight on that affected leg. And that's where you fall. It's counterintuitive. We think, oh, my left leg is hurting. Therefore, I need to hold something on that side. No, when you start holding things there, you do, your body shifts and bear weight on the affected side. And since it's already affected, well, you're going to fall. You put the, the, the device on the right leg, the, not the right leg, the good leg. So hold, cane, at side of the good. Okay, on the good side, not the bad side. And that, that's the that's the principle that has to be followed. Okay. Um, and the elbow is the same thing, 20 to 30 degrees elbow that they need. Um, and then you have to know how far it has to be from the body. It's the same thing. I use the 15 centimeters at least um from um in front of the good leg. You hold it in front of the good leg like that. There's always going to be three points. So um, and and then you 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 do the same thing, okay? What is going to having the the affected leg move affected leg? You move it first, and uh, and then you follow that with. So it's the same thing. You move the affected leg with the cane, okay? And then the good leg move next. That's the way. Uh, and then they because they don't have two device. You're always going to have um two point stand, okay? So two point stand, unaffected move last, and the other one move first. Always they're going to have, and they're going up and down the stairs is the same. You go up with the good leg and go count down with the bad leg. So when they're going up, they move the good leg first, followed by the cane and the affected leg. When you're going down, cane affected leg move down first, and the good leg come. Same thing. Nothing changed. Okay. And then the last one is a walker. So walker is the same. The same principle, just know the management. So they have to wear a shoe when they, they're being uh, uh, measured. Um, and they have to make sure they don't fall from it. Okay. And the worker has to be advanced at least 12 inches. The worker shouldn't be close to them. You can't work with that. 12 inches ahead of them. Okay. And then you advance the, uh, the same story. So at, at, at this event, the affected leg and then um, and the worker go together and then unaffected leg follow. And that's all you need to do. Uh, just know that rolling walker is not good uh, for somebody who, who has Parkinson because they're shaking. If they're shaking, and they cannot get a rolling walker. So what I mean is if rolling walker, you cannot get it for a Parkinson patient because then they, they're going to fall, they're shaking. And these are some small informations I want you to guys to know is fundamental. Fundamental is usually raw. It's not interesting. Um, unfortunately, you got to know it's code. So it's presented in the code manner. And thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. And all the best of luck.